So I wanted to see how much I could improve the third most popular webcam on Amazon right now. It's called the Nexigo N60. It's a 1080p 30 webcam and it goes for just under $40. So I'm going to go through what the camera is, what it does, the software that's included and some of the software modifications that I made on top of that using things like OBS and Nvidia Broadcast. So let's go. All right, so what you're seeing right now is the default settings, everything uh, from the Nexigo N60. One thing you'll probably notice is that the resolution is probably a little bit higher than what you saw in the intro because I'm not zoomed in. It's got a very wide lens, you can see. There's a little bit of distortion on the lens in terms of the vertical lines on the sides. It's got a bit of a fisheye effect to it. Uh, just to go over some of the specs for the Nexigo N60, so first you'll see that you know it's a 1080p full HD webcam. Uh, just to go through some of the things that it can do. One, it's got a privacy shutter that actually attaches to the camera. Uh, I don't have it attached at the moment on my camera and I can't show it unfortunately and hold it because um, I'm using it to film at the moment and I've only got one of them. Uh, just to go through some of the specs though, 110 degrees of field of view as you can see here. Uh, it's got a, even though it says a stereo microphone, I only see one microphone hole in the middle of, or to the left side, I should say, of the lens. Uh, it works with, you know, all of the normal kind of streaming and or uh, video conferencing software, as you might expect. And there are different options. You can go as far down as a 640p image up to 720p or 1080p. All of those things work. And... You know, you can either install it and use it right out of the box, kind of as, as this setting would, would indicate here, or you can use the software that's included uh, as part of what you can get from the Nexigo website. So uh, I'll show you where the software is here. It's, uh, it can be downloaded from nexigo.com slash pages slash support hyphen and hyphen download, and you can get software for Windows as well as Mac and there's a user settings guide. So that all installs as you would normally install the software. Now, let me just go ahead and show you what that software looks like. So I'm gonna pull this up and here you can see I've got a, a nice preset and you can actually save presets and you'll see I've got three presets here already saved. Um, if I look, you know, everything is pretty much set to 128, uh, power line frequency set to 50 hertz in our case. Um, I think normally it would be 60 hertz in the US, but um, it works. There's no flickering or anything behind me. And you'll see that exposure is on auto exposure. Uh, gain is at 50. Zoom, uh, the lowest settings at 10. When you go to 11, which is what I normally go to um, on the closer setting, that zooms in about 10%. Um, and then there's, once you zoom in, you'll be able to do pan and tilt as well. So I'm going to go to my uh, different setting that I have. I had three different attempts uh, and just show you the, some of the settings that I was able to uh, set to get to the, you know, the closer frame uh, for the camera and kind of what I wanted to get here. So you can see now I'm more or less framed in as I would normally film most of my YouTube content uh, right now with the camera and everything's uh, looking pretty good in terms of the background, uh, the skin tones, those types of things. It's pretty close to what I would normally film like with some of my better cameras, my more, my more expensive cameras, I should say. And you can see I'm zoomed in one tick. I've got minus one on the pan uh, and uh, plus one on tilt. So that means it's going just to the, to the right side a little bit just to frame out um, the window that I have behind me. And if I go to adjustments, you'll see I've turned off the auto white balance. Um, it was a bit on the oranger or yellower side, as you could tell in the beginning. Uh, the brightness, I've got it um, down a little bit. I've got the contrast up just one. Saturation down a little bit. Uh, sharpness down and gamma down to 80. So that's what gave me the closest setting. So then once I take this and then I add to it uh, a few other settings. So let me go ahead and show you what I've got in this case on, um, on OBS. So here on OBS, I have some uh, some color correction, not much. Um, it's basically instead of white, you can see how close it is to the white. I've got it just a little bit on the beige side because it was 
a little bit pink uh, by default, so I'd change the, um, the color to FF9F3 in terms of hex. And I turned on sharpness to about the default. I think the default is 0 0.05, but 0 0.06. So you can see there's a little bit of sharpening on it. Now, in terms of getting the background blur that you saw in the intro scene, the thing that I did there was to add NVIDIA Broadcast into the mix. So you'll see that I've got my camera set up to point to NVIDIA Broadcast. And now the first thing that I did here was to turn on background blur. Now what that does is it blurs out the background, as you can tell, and kind of as the name would suggest, and that makes it look like you've got a low aperture kind of lens uh, assigned. It makes the kind of my image pop a bit more versus the background. And one more thing I did was turn on noise removal. Um, I believe I had it on week actually uh, in the intro scene recording. So that then gets rid of a little bit of the kind of the graininess that you'll see, as well as uh, some of the uh, image uh, parts that you'll see on, on my face uh, in terms of some of the grain there. Because I am um, zooming in a little bit digitally, that means I'm losing a little bit of resolution. So that uh, made the image look more, in my opinion, like maybe a 1600 by 900 type image or a 720p almost image, but it's pretty close you know, to uh, the image that I would have expected. So now with those settings, so I'm using now basically, as you saw, uh, the tweaks that I made with the Nexigo app to tweak the image. I've you know zoomed in a little bit. I've panned and tilted the camera a little bit uh, to get the frame that I wanted. And then kind of the secret to having that more cinematic look and the background blur is the NVIDIA broadcast. And just a note there, you need to have an RTX supporting NVIDIA graphics card to get that to work. Yes, there are different background blur effects that are out there. This is one of the better ones in terms of, you know, the quality of the background blur and how nicely it's kind of uh, cutting out uh, my silhouette here uh, from the background. So. That's one of the advantages of having a GPU that will support uh, RTX for NVIDIA broadcast. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show one more thing, I'm gonna try to at least, uh, in terms of the default microphones. Let me go ahead and turn off my standard microphone, the Shure. And now I'm on the webcam microphone. I haven't actually listened to the webcam microphone, so this is the built-in webcam microphone for the Nexigo. Let me go ahead and switch back to the Thor MV7. There we go, now we're back on the uh, better, the Shure microphone, just to get a taste of what the two uh, sound like. And you can see that I'm recording through OBS at the moment, and I'm also recording on uh, Camtasia, so you can get a capture of the screen that I'm seeing, in addition to uh, what I'm recording from a video output perspective through the camera. So this is the Nexigo N60, and these are all of the things that I set it with in order to get the image as well as the audio to work using OBS and NVIDIA Broadcast and the Nexigo app to set the camera. There you have it, the Nexigo N60 budget webcam for under $40. Again, this is something that you can get right now on Amazon.com, sometimes even less expensive than $40 because I think that with a few small modifications, depending on the software you have access to, things like what's in OBS, the software that comes from Nexigo, plus if you've got uh, the ability to use NVIDIA Broadcast for things like the background blur that you can see behind me, you can make this budget webcam look really good for your online meetings, for your streams, for YouTube videos, maybe if you're recording them, you don't need to break the bank to have a great image so hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, then be sure to hit the like button. Otherwise, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you so much for watching.